and uh, feel free to share this click that thing to be notified of my other uh, you know when I go live stuff that would help I'm just trying to share the live stream now uh, hey Tommy hey how are you sir that's fantastic uh, I'm just trying to share this with a few folks while I'm at it. This whole session was uh, inspired by uh, Sifu Matt Stamp, by the way. And uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's pretty good. Sure, I'm just in my horse stance here, by the way, already and uh, invite you to, to do the same. And uh, so I guess what I'll do is I'll uh, talk a little bit about uh, what the series is or is becoming, I suppose. Uh, it's gotta be about 30 because it's uh, lightly snowing. Actually, it kind of seems like it might have just paused or finished, like right now. So maybe right when I logged in, it stopped, I don't know. Uh, but at any rate, the, the series is uh, stance practice, or at least so far. We might continue if there's interest in extending this to other uh, uh, real basics, um, uh, such as pivoting, stepping, uh, <clears throat> gesturing, breathing, tween, uh, stretching, these sort of things. Uh, but uh, th that's where my creativity is directing me, but uh, I'm not going to go there without you. So if I don't uh, find the interest in support and, and connection, uh, I'll wait to see what else my creativity lands on, and that's what I'll be doing. Uh, so if it's what you want to see, show up share, like, practice, comment, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, these are all up on my YouTube channel as well. So uh, I'll be collecting a playlist there for people. Anyway, the idea is to invite people into a practice uh, without uh, setting up their ego to be uh, challenged by somebody, you know, that's a martial artist that has a school and a black belt and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, Look at that amazing stance. I could never do that. That would hurt. I, I'll never get that low or I have to get that low. She's getting that low. Um, I'm trying to do it as small and subtle as I can to invite the most number of people into the practice. And this may be somebody that's simply aged or uh, uh, sedentary, uh, post-surgical, post-illness, maybe currently in an illness, uh, gotten a little old and overweight, for example. Uh, maybe somebody with a joint disease and uh, say, well, you know, if I, you know, look for somebody teaching, uh, you know, crouch stance, I'm just going to see people with their, you know, their, their, their foot, their calf, their, their uh, hamstring, their buttock, their tailbone all on the floor, <laughs> you know, uh, and I can never do that. And if I could do that, I can never get up. So I'm either... Um, uh, dangerously inspired so I kind of get myself into trouble or I'm also dangerously um, uh, uh, scared off and so I'm in a horse stance right now you might certainly you know Google horse stance and see this kind of a practice uh, you know with somebody in a silk outfit or a black belt and all the rest and while that can be inspiring it can also inspire uh, competitiveness that's undue, and it can inspire uh, fear, which keeps people on the couch or in that sick, uh, <laughs> cyclic sickness. And so that's the idea. So anyway, I've been doing them every day. Uh, again, thanks to Matt Stamp, who inspired me with his post about horse stance. And I thought, let me just get out there and practice. Might as well record it and uh, invite as many people in as I can. So I think what I've done is six stances. I think that's right. Um, so I did one stance a day, and then on the th uh, third day, I think, I reviewed those three stances. So we reviewed them, got into some details, 
Uh, so that would make it on the fifth, sixth, and seventh day, or the three more stances, the eighth day, another review. And then uh, the last two days, which I think were day nine and 10, making today day 11, I think, um, what I did is I just practiced each stance. So I'm on day three of the practice. So my plan is just to practice the stance, not so much teach it. Um, and so what we're going to be wanting for all of these is a stable level uh, structure to stand on. So, a, you know, a built floor, for example. Uh, I don't happen to have a very level spot. There's a slight slope here. Uh, and, you know, so of course it's uh, the lawn. So it's uh, about as flat as it gets. But this is where my Wi-Fi works. And hopefully this gives you a little bit of a view instead of somebody's view of just another interior, you know, all, all your Zoom sessions. Um, so I'm practicing in an imperfect place, but it's not too bad. Um, and, uh, but I invite you to make sure that you're on a flat level, warm enough space. And make sure that you have grip and purchase with your feet. So that could be your tennis shoes, your footwear. Uh, it, it could be your feet themselves. Uh, but I wouldn't want to just practice this in socks or, you know, on a, on a you know, tile floor, for example, that may be cold and it may be slippery. So please use uh, some common sense and direct your awareness to the place of the practice and how you meet that place. So, uh, you know, the feet and the place. So warm enough for you, not that I'm doing that, uh, level enough, supportive enough, non-slip enough. Okay. And I'm just going to practice bending the knees and unbending the knees. So I'm practicing tracking the knees, moving in the direction of my toes as they bend. So they don't pigeon in and they don't kick out. They don't both drift to the right or both drift to the left. They just drive in the direction described as a line I would draw between my heel and my toes, which is to say forward. So for me facing camera, which is about Southwest today for, for me. So I'm just sinking and rising. And I'm gonna see if there's any questions. Hey, Sandy, hello, Jared, you made it. I hope you're having a far better day today, Jared. <clears throat> and uh, so I see you guys on there. Feel free to type any questions you have. I'm going to make a note about what I just said so I can append our uh, description. I'm trying to do a description in the YouTube uh, post and the Patreon post every day. Uh, Okay, good. That helps. I already uh, did some classes, taped a few things. I have a class following this, and I had a thought uh, that I'd like to append to the description. I was like, I'm going to lose it. Uh, and if I remember, I'll just kind of remember that there was kind of a thought, but I don't remember what it was um, completely. So I think I got it written down there. So just over and over, you probably see almost no movement here. That's the idea of the class or the course or the series, I guess, is that I'm not going as far as I want to go, as I see my classmate go, as I remember to go, as my ego tells me is the only way to do it. I'm just practicing um, very subtle, very small, And I'm putting my hands in my pockets, which feels so weird as a martial artist. <laughs> but part of what I've been trying to do in this class is not also give you these other things to work on as you practice what the legs are doing. Just make it simple. So I've been trying to let the hands hang and putting them in my pocket may help me a little bit because I'm, I'm so wired to uh, add to the practice in the upper body. But here, my brain can really settle into the lower body and what I'm doing. 
So I can feel the angle of the knee change and the angle of the hip. And I want to be checking in that as I do this, I don't tip forward at all. I don't have that subtle bow. And we've talked about that in a number of episodes. So I'm going to try this with the Shikodashi too, the, uh, which we haven't taught yet, but uh, a little wider, a little bit open. We've taught this, this exercise, but not this, this dance per se. And I'm just going to be shifting and tracking the knee moving over the ball of the foot, no further, not cheating to the inside, not cheating to the outside. And if I'm comfortable here, I can kind of come down a bit, shift, come to center, shift, come to center. Needing a break, I can just come up when I return to center, one side, center, other side, center, take a break if you need it, down, trying to coordinate the breath, we want to call to, collect, coalesce, coordinate, all the facets of the being, and we begin a practice. If you're at home taking notes, call to, collect, coalesce, coordinate, and the list goes on, but that's a nice start. Good. So we're going to do a couple uh, stretches that are particular to uh, the cat stance today, or particular, I guess, to the, the ankle, although I think one of the ones I do uh, also really nice for shin splints. Uh, so we'll see how far we go and what I remember and perhaps what your comments are. Uh, <clears throat> so the first one I'm going to do is to uh, raise my foot up a little bit. <clears throat> so uh, for me, I usually use a, like a table. So my knee is uh, at the top of my stomach or so. Uh, but as long as you're on a stable place for your foundation foot, a stable place for this, you're going to be in good shape. Now what's going to be important about this is that your foundation foot is fairly close um, to your uh, raised foot. Uh, as we go into the stretch, if these are too far apart as we do the stretch, it's going to invite my weight onto the raised foot. And if I invite my weight onto the raised foot, it can create a problem if I start to wobble or lose my balance or certainly if I slip. And so. I want to be very certain of my support on my foundation foot. And that might mean that you have an external support available to you, whether that's a railing or a counter or a wall or a cane or a walker or something like that. So I just have this big old beaver stick, so that'll work. So the practice here is to have your foot flat on a surface course I don't have a flat surface and we'll see why in a bit I think but the practice here is to bring that knee forward without weight on it and that's why you'll see that if I had my foot further forward as the knee comes forward it has to kind of pull my weight out of this and that weight would go onto this leg if I wasn't using this pole in my case so Trying to keep the weight on the rear leg, or at least very largely, primarily on the rear leg. And that foot is flat. I'm kind of causing mine to be uh, horizontal. And stretch forward. Sounds like we have a delivery, so it make it loud here. So repeat the stretch. Try and coordinate with the breath. Exhale, hold, inhale when you come out. This time when we hold, let's see if we can hold for 15 to 20 seconds and breathe while you do it. Coordinate coming out with an inhalation. Exhale.
work to keep the sole of my foot flat, but you'd be doing this on a flat, stable surface. Looks like we're getting the propane delivery for the school. They're probably going to put in almost no propane because we're barely using the studio these days. Uh, almost everything's being taught outdoors. So the next version of this, I'll kind of do kind of facing camera. And this is again, this is now going to be even more important not to drive weight into this foot. So being close to your foundation, when I drive forward, I'm going to drive the knee to the inside, stretching the ankle. seconds or so, not that I set a timer here. That was a quick delivery. I'm not uh, coming out of that. Uh, I'm not giving myself, you know, hand postures and gestures to do. I'm able to check the phone and try and check in with folks on the live stream, which is such a different kind of experience for me. Uh, usually, there's nothing in my hands but a shape or, or a tool uh, or a prop, and <laughs> uh, you know, that's directly related to the action that I'm practicing. So same practice here, same thing, just on the other side. I uh, practice this uh, when I'm walking on, on like a tree stump or a boulder or something like that. How do you, if you want to just set it right on the front step, so where it's dry, I don't think it'll blow away. I'll, and if it does, I'm here, I'll see. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, that, that's ideal. Thank you. And then come back to center and we'll come to the inside. So this is uh, not tracking the knee, right, explicitly, and we're looking for a stretch of the ankle. If this is weight bearing and I was depending on this, when that ankle gets overstretched, I may develop strain in the knee, certainly also in the ankle, and of course feel the, the foot peel up off the ground. That's why I keep saying that the foot is level. I'm not going uh, so far that I feel the heel rise, for example. <coughs> come back to center, and we come to the outside. Just kind of, just 
kind of works out pretty well for this actually. Okay, so the next one where we're going to have that dorsiflexion and plantar flexion in the foot. Um, this one you can use with a medicine ball or, uh, or uh, like, a, like a, I use a five gallon bucket sometimes and just laying on its side so it's, you know, it's around. Here I have a sort of rounded rock that I like to use when I'm outside. Um, <laughs> this will be fun, uh, barefoot in a 30 degree stone. But the practice here, and I guess this isn't as stable as I'd like it to be here. I feel like I might kind of just roll it over. Um, trying to make sure you'll be able to see, is for me to, if this is a, a ball that I'd roll, I'd just be keeping my foot on it and rolling it. But as this won't roll, it's kind of a half round stone. I'm going to just kind of trace it with my foot so that I have that here that we have that dorsiflexion and I have that plantar flexion. And of course, I'm not just doing that because I'm trying to uh, uh, be connected to that whole round surface, which of course is an imperfect round, you know, for, for my foot. Oh boy, I can feel it want to uh, cramp from the cold already. That's pretty amazing. <clears throat> this is the, uh, the mini Wim Hof practice. This, uh, just make your soul cold and that's all you need. So normally when you'd be doing a dorsiflexion exercise, the toes would be reaching towards the kneecap and I'm trying to meet the shape. So I have a couple different actions going on in the foot. But again, this is, you can imagine me kind of rolling this as I practice. And you can certainly do this uh, if you're seated. Uh, it doesn't have to be a single legged standing practice, uh, but that could certainly uh, be one to do. Uh, the other, which I don't have a, uh, a great example for, I guess, but I think we'll just try it this way, is to, if you are able and comfortable, uh, come on down to the ground and whatever you need to do for your balance in terms of using your hands is going to be fine, but I guess that's probably the rock is in the way. But if you know Seiza position, we're going to be something similar to Seiza here. But normally I'd recommend having a stick here to help support yourself. I'm kind of leaned over, uh, trying not to soak my clothes through. Um, but the practice here is just, just to, if you can reach, right, if you can reach, just have a little bit of pressure in the area of the Achilles. I try not to have focused pressure, but kind of use the cup of the hand. And press that down. Uh, some people, I don't think staying down there for a long time is going to uh, help me. Some people will do that sort of a practice. I guess this is a good excuse to have um, my uh, sip of hot drink. But we talked about doing that practice here. I guess this is a closer height <clears throat> earlier here. So there's, there's that practice. Notice that I'm keeping my weight here as opposed to leaning and going in this way. But similar idea here would be this practice. And I could rest, you know, like on the bed, for example, I can rest my whole knee and shin there and then just pressing down, maybe 20 seconds, coordinate with the breath. But for some people reaching back to the Achilles is its own challenge where they're gonna uh, strain the ribs or something and I'm not trying to invite you to do that. And that may be the kind of practice you can get help from. You can get into the position and have the balance and have a loved one help provide that stretch. <clears throat> um, let's do, let's do another one for the ankle. So here I'm going to stand on one leg. So certainly you can do your metal chicken stance 
uh, if you like. Um, but as we're going to be doing an empty stance here when we get into our practice, uh, I am going to use the stick or encourage you to use the stick so that this is less about a balance exercise and more of a stretch focus. So I'm going to support one knee in the air. Doesn't really matter how high, <clears throat> but I want to have it high enough that if I have that plantar flexion kind of dipping your toe in the pool, that I don't touch the ground. So it doesn't really matter to me if it's here or here or even behind you or high or moderate or quite low. It doesn't really make a difference. So the practice is to think of the, uh, probably your big toe, I think that's what most people default to, but it could be any toe, and just draw um, a letter A with the toe. And then, no surprise here, draw a letter B with the toe. And then draw a little letter C with the toe. Then D. Now you could try and do this by using the hip and keeping the knee in the ankle. So I'm using the hip here. So it's like my whole leg is in a cast. I can do it with the knee, right? But here today we're doing it with the ankle. So when your ankle moves, your knee and your hip are going to move somewhere, and that's fine. But we want our primary focus to be how much that ankle moves in space. So just going through the alphabet, if you need a break, set it down. If you need a longer break, you can have a seat, of course, and you can just perhaps just try the other leg. I got up to F. Let me go with this leg, see how far I go. And that's fine. It doesn't have to be fast, it can be slow, it could be cursive or print, whatever that's called, print. I guess non-cursive is just called print, I don't, I don't know. And the idea here is just to move it through a great range of its motion, probably all of it. And the alphabet is varied and probably contains every type of movement that we can get out of the ankle in this way, even though we're not particularly emphasizing eversion or something. More advanced people, I'll have them write this, you know, like uh, write it on a, on a curved surface that they imagine. So like that bucket, I'm writing a large letter on a curved surface, and that invites an awful lot more thinking and action out of my ankle. But I can try and do this small or medium, slow or fast, or smooth, or very accurate, or, you know, sans serif, or serif, whatever, calligraphy, whatever you like. Usually what I'll do, rather than going through the alphabet, is I'll just write a poem as I do this sort of practice. And again, that's going to go through a variety of letters in a varied order, and I can focus on that. Because it's the alphabet, you could certainly do numbers if you happen to you know, count to 100 or something like that. But because it's the alphabet, you're not going to have to use a lot of thinking about where does my foot go. You know that part. So your focus can be on your balance, on your endurance, on your breathing, on your mobility, on the, the, uh, the emphasis of the ankle in this case rather than the knee. So I didn't think I went to Z. I just kind of... Uh, started doing some Chinese characters, uh, but really whatever you like. Okay, we're going to get into doing some practice here. <clears throat> the great Peter Stolzman is here. Hello, sir. Hope you're doing well. We have a uh, slightly Canada-like uh, view for you with some snow, and that's, that's the best we can do. Hi, Nancy. Hello. So we're going to practice... Uh, cat stance today. I think I did a whole lot more stretching and warm-up than I planned. Uh, yeah, I did. My coffee is pretty cold. But I got my Ken Nichols cup. So, in a manner of speaking, it's always warm. So, I'm in my cat, and I'm going... <laughs> Tommy does it. Memorize songs. That's cool, like writing the lyrics. 
Yeah, pretty sweet. I dig it. I don't know if I've done lyrics before, but same idea, really. Nice. Um, all right, so I made that note. And we're going to switch to a, a totem and so forth in a moment. Oh, yeah, I was going to do my clock here. That was my plan. I'm just doing in my 90 degree cat stance here. Again, I've just come down for me, maybe three inches today, something like that. I've sunk down. Head suspended, eyes on the horizon, unless you're looking at your phone. <laughs> uh, knee tracking on the foundation foot. If you're able, knee tracking on the unweighted side, the empty side. So that's about 30 seconds. So I'm gonna transition to the 60 degree position. Maybe we'll do a ratchet version of this when we get to the other side, just to... Uh... So I think that's a, another 30. So now I'm gonna come to the 30 degree position. No change in the foundation knee track. So as we saw here, I'm at 30 degrees or so with my empty knee, but my torso can be at that point. It could be a little past depending on the styles that you're doing, and so long as you're caring for what needs caring for. But I could turn uh, to face, let's say 60 degrees here. I can turn my trunk to face where my uh, empty femur is, which is 30, and I can turn it to face uh, 30 degrees from there, or forward southwest for me. Those are our general three options. And the same would go for any of these. I can go just out it, just out of it, with it, open. And in this case, I have more room to open further so I can fully open, although you don't see that kind of cat stance too often, but it is doable. Um, generally, as a, like a, 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 a grand emotion that's gonna bring my energy back front, you know, I'm coming here and bringing my energy back. So we're gonna do the ratchet version on the next. And again, I'm gonna invite you to do this with a totem um, uh, or talisman. And I happen to have this uh, Bowie knife uh, here, which I was uh, practicing uh, this moonlight practice. I'm trying to learn with it um, last night. Uh, so it was out, Hexadilla was gardening it all night. And that's, uh, that's my reminder for class. And we'll see if it keeps bothering me or not. Uh, so I've chosen, I've chosen the, uh, the, uh, the Bowie knife uh, here uh, to do the cat stance because I don't want to be flat-footed carrying a live blade, right? If this blade drops, I want to be able to move that foot. I don't wanna have my weight here and have the blade over it. When it drops, I have to shift and then move the foot, right? Um, boy, would that be scary. So I'm practicing, or what I'm doing is I'm choosing to practice holding this blade on the side of the open cat stance, the empty side, as opposed to, you certainly could, holding it over my foundation foot or just on this side of my body, not that I'd hold it like right over the foot. Um, and of course, being essentially barefoot here, I just have these kind of slip on, uh, whatever these are called, um, and uh, a heavy live blade that's gonna have a fair amount of piercing, actually we just saw. Um, there, for me, there's a, an added element that comes in, right? You're like, wow, that's a live blade. I've come to love my toes. Uh, and find them necessary. And so that's an element of the practice. So as we said, I want to decide um, one hand or two, um, which side I'm holding it on, 
what height I'm holding it on. Uh, for me, I'm holding this to about heart height. That's just what's working out for me. Um, in fact, I'm gonna just have a gesture to my heart with the other side. Then I wanna determine how close I wanna hold it to the body. Is it essentially touching or perhaps uh, touching? Uh, is it near the body or is it fairly far, right? And then I wanna have a sense of uh, where the item is facing, right? So I've, I've decided um, how far, but it, is it this way, this way, this way, this way? You know, where is this facing? For example, there's a, a, there's a blade side and a back side. Um, where do I want the back side? Where do I want the blade side? Do I want, in this case, do I want the, the point down or up or, or what have you? In other words, it's all considered. As I consider each of these things, some of them I might decide, yeah, that doesn't really matter to me at all. Perfectly fine. But at least I've considered them. May not really matter which level to you for this item at this time, but I want to consider them. Which hand, how many hands, which side, how level, how close, and then orientation. <clears throat> so that it's all considered, right? Uh, that's sort of a practice for me of sanctifying uh, my, um, my, uh, uh, my, my meeting with today's practice, the, the way I come to meet the practice that I find. So I think I've been in this cat stance for a while, but I'm going to just kind of enjoy it now that I'm, I'm done talking. So I'm going to come back to 60. So I can ratchet this by maybe doing 30 seconds where I'm turning to the outside of my knee with my trunk, not taking this with me, of course. And then turning my trunk to match that 60. 60 degrees being how separate my feet point or uh, femurs point. One facing here, the other facing here. That's a 60 degree uh, angle, roughly, of course. In my case, very rough. I are all of my martial stuff. And then I'm gonna try opening I'm at 60, so I'm going to open to 30 and maybe do that for another 30 seconds. So now my left leg is off to my left a little bit from where my nose and belly button are. Although once I have my trunk here, I could also practice my head, consider in different directions. But to simplify, I'm going to keep my nose where my belly button's going. And of course, I can continue forward with my trunk. And I could also practice a, a ratchet style where let's say I'm facing where my knee is, I 
spend a little time with my trunk here, let's say 30 seconds, whatever. And then I'm going to match it with my leg. Then my trunk is going to go and then match it with the leg, depending on the stance that you're doing. Um, I could also move leg followed by trunk. Doesn't really make a difference, but it's a fun way to do it. So you have these slight variations in how you uh, represent the stance. Uh, so I'm going to, maybe I'll do it kind of slightly away from you this time. Is that how I want to do it? Yeah. Let's, uh, we'll change and do this slightly away. Kind of change in this time. How I'm holding it. And then I'll check in, see if there's uh, comments or questions. And because of my timer going off, I'm guessing I'm about out of time too, so. Of course, if you can't stay there comfortably and well, as long as I am, vary the stance, take a rest, shift to another stance, have a seat, sit, stretch out some more. You might be done, you might have more in you. I'm not standing here saying stand here as long as I am. And certainly if you're ready to stand a little longer than I'm doing now, please do that. We wanna be able to do things without being driven by the ego. We wanna be able to do things uh, uh, without uh, eroding the uh, how well the things are being done when we do them. So if you do it for a long time and the, the, uh, the quality degrades, uh, then you're, you're not in a good practice. You're serving your ego because your ego says, boy, I did it for 15 minutes today. Yesterday was only 10. But your Sifu, who often says something diametrically opposed to your ego, says, uh, well, it's going to take a long time to undo that five minutes of bad practice. So I'm going to come back to uh, this open. So this might be, you know, like a live blade, something that I practiced the metal chicken in as well, where I already have that leg up. Um, so I think that's going to be about our time. Give you a look at the blade. Maybe we'll do a quick cool down. So uh, again, we want to um, we want to have. Hopefully, that's right on the camera. We want to have. Um, we want to have a practice uh, talisman or totem in this case to call to mind. Uh, somebody or something that means a lot to us uh, and uh, since I don't have anything else to do with my hands in these practices it's nice to have that totem or talisman but we've taught that on the previous two days um, uh, I expect the next three days we'll do the same thing so think about having a totem or a talisman I'm back in my horse stance now <clears throat> and I'm gonna drive my knee forward shift Drive my knee forward. Try not to cantilever. Try not to let one hip kick up. Keep this foundation knee tracked. I'm just kind of loosening up hip, knee, ankle, toes, instep, and all those tissues in there. Shift. Just repeatedly driving the patella forward. Same way you might close a kitchen cabinet below your counter when you're cooking, your hands are full, and you just all right, get that closed. I should do a cooking channel. I probably do more kicking <laughs> when I cook than when I teach martial arts. <laughs> I'm just forever doing this and closing the fridge here and 
closing that drawer there and moving that pot there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's probably about our time. I'll check in, see if there's questions or comments before I click end. Uh, but if you're still with us, if you're still with us, please consider uh, sharing this if you have a group that might benefit. And uh, let me see if there's questions. Hey, Steven's back. Sifu Withington is here. Hooray. Hi, Jan. How are you? All right, no more questions. So I will be uh, uh, calling it a day now. Thank you.